Okay, today we're going to be scraping, again, mug shots. This is not going to be a fully automated process, uh, but just a quick way to um, pull stuff. I, I guess I really shouldn't call it scraping, but that's kind of what we're doing, uh, but partially using a web browser. Again, in the future, we're going to look at a fully automated way of this, but I'm just going to do a quick way of grabbing all the content from a web page when you're viewing it. So real quick, I'm in an empty directory here called Mugs. I'm at a sheriff's office website here. I'm going to say accept. I'm going to type in a name. I'll just say Smith, and that will return... Well, a lot of people, in this case, 100 people named Smith who were arrested over, I believe, the last 10 years. And they're all loading here. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control-Shift-I to bring up our um, Developers tab here. Or you can hit F12 if you have an F12 button. And we'll make sure we're in the Network tab and we have all. I'm now going to refresh the page. And now everything that loads on the page, every image, every text, um, all the scripts, they all load down here. Once they're all loaded, I should be able to come down here, right click and say, save all as HRA content. And I'm gonna save it to that directory we're working in. So if I come back to my shell here, I can list out now and we can see we have this file. And if I open it up, again, it's a JSON file that, uh, that not only has the text and information, because it also has information on when these things are loaded into your browser. Basically, it just all the information of everything that loaded in your browser on that page. And in there, you can also find things that look like a whole bunch of text, like this, which is base64, which is actually, in most cases, uh, in this case, an image uh, that's saved as plain text that you can extract and convert back into a binary image file. Last time, we used grep to pull that stuff out. This time, we're going to use a program called JQ, which is designed for parsing through JSON. Real quick, let's go in here, and we go back up to the top, and you can see that we have... Uh, our first little entry here is log, and then a sub-entry of that is called entries, which we can see is an array. So we're going to go through, we're going to say we want to look at our, our, our log. From the log, we want to look at arrays, or sorry, entries, which are arrays, and we want to go through all of those. And there are different things. The request is what our browser asks for. We want the response. Uh, so response is what the web server turned back to us. And then from that, we want the content. Uh, and then from within the content, we're gonna want the text, but not all the text, but let's start there. So I'm gonna say JQ, once you have JQ installed, which uh, uh, should be in your package manager if you're on Debian and I guess a lot of distros. Uh, we're gonna say JQ, and in quotations, we're going to say dot, which means basically show everything. And we're going to say one dot HRA, H-A-R. There we go. And basically, it's basically right now, it's catting it out, but color coding stuff for us a little bit. But now I can say, okay, I don't want everything. I want, but I want everything in the log section, which is still pretty much everything. But underneath the log section, I want entries. And there we go, we've got entries. But uh, entries is an array, so we're gonna put the brackets here. But from that array, we want all the response, let's spell things right, response, uh, responses. So we'll do that, and we got all the responses. So we're narrowing down our information. Next, from the responses, we don't care about, you know, what loaded, what time it loaded. We, we, we just want the content. Uh, so we're gonna say content, and that will narrow it down even more. And now we can say that we want text. So we want all the little entries that say text, which in many cases are is going to be our base 64, but, may not, but we may not want all of that. We just want the PNGs because there's other text, and then there's, there's in this particular case, there's logos at the top page, which are uh, JPEGs. We just want the PNG files. So what we're going to do here is it's, instead of saying uh, text, we're going to say little pipe symbol, select, and then parentheses. And this is going to allow us to do a search. We're going to look for everything that has the MIME type, so the, the type of file it is. And we want ones that say equal image slash PNG. OK, uh, let's see what we do. OK, after that, then we want to say pipe.text. So if I typed all that right, we're going to be looking for I have all the entries. We're going to look, be looking for the responses. We're going to look at the content of those responses. And then from that, we're going to select all the ones that have the MIME type of image PNG. And then from that, from the ones that have that match, we want to view their text, 
which should be our base 64. I obviously typed something wrong. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the only thing, error, pipe, select, oh, there it is. I see the problem now. No period before the pipe symbol. Okay. Image is not defined. Okay. Uh, give me one second here. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Uh, I have quotations inside quotations. Let's change these outer quotations uh, to single quotation marks because I have quotation marks here. And so that was thinking, I believe it's gonna, it was thinking that this is ended and then it's starting a new command. So now, yes, there we go. So be careful with those quotation marks. Another thing you can do is you can backslash out so you can slash out characters. But in this case, I'm just using single quotations on the outside and double quotations on the inside, also known as regular quotation marks. So there we go. We now have um, our our base 64, but we uh, don't want, again, it's in quotation marks here. We may not want, we don't want the quotation marks. So uh, we should be able to say dash dash raw dash output. And I believe that will give us the output without the quotations, any tags that go along with it. There we go. So now we have our base 64 going through line by line. And um, let's just do a, a test run on one. So what I'll do is I'll say shuf-n1, if you have shuf on your machine, not every machine will. You can do tail-n1, uh, but I'm gonna do shuf to get a random one instead of just the last one. Maybe because I feel bad for that last lady, I don't wanna keep showing her same picture over and over again. Hey, look, she was arrested. <laughs> so uh, that should give us a random one of these images. And at this point, I can pipe that into base64-d for decode. And we will pipe that into ImageMagic's display, uh, which is just a viewer, but it can take the standard output. And now we should get a random picture. Quit out of that. Yep. So we're doing good. And unlike our grep thing, this should almost pretty much always work on this file because um, it doesn't matter if things move around. We're actually looking at the tags uh, and parsing through it as JSON. So real quick, let's do what we did in the last video. And we're going to say let x equal 0, meaning we're making a variable uh, x, which is equal to 0. The let is saying that it is an integer. And then here, instead of shuffling and grabbing 1, shuffling and grabbing 1, we're going to say pipe into while read. And again, I'll do m for mugshot. Do echo dollar sign m into base 64 decode. We will pipe that into dollar sign x dot png. And then we'll say let x plus plus, which means every time we loop, we're going to add one to x. And then we'll say that we're done. Give it a moment. And then I can use my package manager, not my package manager, but my file manager to look at this directory. And there we go. We have all these uh, mug shots. So very similar to what we did last time, but instead of using grep, we used uh, JQ, which is a better way to go if you're going to be working and wanting to parse through JSON. Uh, but the grep way, again, grep is pretty much everywhere where JQ may not be on your system. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you both ways. Both are good exercises to do. And I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you have a great day. I'll try to remember to put notes in the description of this video. Uh, so check out that link, and I hope that you have a great day.